Very good morning to all of you. Greetings from Bangladesh. At the outset, I must thank to the organizers of the All India Ophthalmological Society for giving me this opportunity to discuss what I think is extremely important related to the world of presbyopia, and that is the presbyopia challenges in the refractive cataract surgery. I have no financial disclosures. As you know, our human crystalline lens, it provides very good accommodations with clear vision at all distances, has a great contrast sensitivity, no rotational asymmetry, produces very minimum aberrations. We are born with multifocality, <coughs> and so desire for multifocality during our cataract surgery is quite natural. Presbyopia is always a challenge in cataract surgery because 100% of the cataract patients are presbyopic at the time of surgery. And loss of accommodation is the first complication of intraocular lens implantation surgery. And today's patients are very demanding. They expect clear vision for all distances without the need for any spectacles. So multifocal vision is a basic need for today's life. Cataract surgery is a refractive surgery nowadays because the modern day cataract surgery brings a great opportunity in front of a surgeon for treating the cataract and correcting the presbyopia simultaneously. If you look at the evolution of the presbyopia correcting eyeballs, you will see it started with the refractive, then diffractive, refractive, diffractive, bifocals, trifocals, edofs. They have plano and toric versions as well. If you look at the clinical survey done in 2017, yes, years, when the surgeon were asked, what is their preferred lenses? You can see most of the surgeons, they use trifocals about 45%, edof about 22.3%, and bifocals about 25.29%. But then they were asked, which of the following presbyopia correcting technology are you most interested in integrating in your practice in the next five years? You can easily see the edof and the trifocals raised the top, you know, more than 58, and then the newer lens of light adjustable 21 and shape changing eyeballs. But the happy news is that 85% of the presbyopia correcting eyeball patients are satisfied with their vision at all distances, the survey revealed. It started with monovision in 1958. Then the refractive eye well came where the concentric ring-shaped zones on the anterior surface of the lens. Then the diffractive eye well came with the concentric diffractive zones on the posterior surface of the lens that causes interference of the optic wavefronts based on the hygiene's Fresnel principle. Basically what happens when light enters through these lenses, the light gets splitted and there is a simultaneous perception of disparate images which really produces far vision, about 41% light distribution for far and about 41% for near, and the rest causes this halos, glare, and star baths. And for the destructive interference, there's a reduction in the contrast sensitivity. Then the bifocal eye well came in 1986, and now we have different ads, and you can blend those things for a better vision better intermediate vision. The compromises of the traditional bifocal eyewells include the photic issues of halos, the glare, the reduction in contrast sensitivity, the problems with the intermediate vision, and longer neuroadaptations. Then the trifocal eyewell came in 2010 with panoptics, Atlisa, fine vision. These are the Alcon panoptics and Zeiss Atlisa, widely used trifocal gives excellent distance, intermediate, and near vision, but still having the problems of the glare and halos. Different meta-analyses from different literatures have shown the trifocal eye well provides better intermediate vision than the bifocal eye well. Then the EDOF lenses came in 2014, and particularly the Symphony. It has got a proprietary edgeless design which elongates the focus and thereby just gives the depth of visions. And they have proprietary achromatic technology which reduces the chromatic aberrations. And they have toric versions as well. 
different meta-analyses from various literatures have shown that EDOF eye will provide better intermediate vision in comparison to bifocal and trifocals. If you look at the light distribution, you will see the Technis bifocal lenses, the light distributor, as I said, 41% for near and 41% for distance. But if you look at the pan optics, you can see now the latest lenses, it has 50% for distance, 25% for intermediate, and 25% for near. And the accommodative eye wells couldn't be popular because of the limited range of accommodations, capsular contractions, and the fibrosis. Then the IC8, Acufocus Small Aperture Pinhole Lens, basically works on the principle of the camera inlay, where the dominant eye is implanted with the monofocal eye well, targeting plano for the distance, non-dominant eye is implanted with an IC8 eye well, targeting minus 0.75. And the now key on the block is the monofocal lens Technis eye hence eye well. It offers a slightly broader defocus curve for high quality distance and intermediate visions. Now we have add-on piggyback lenses also like Sulcoflex lenses and for the post-operative touch-up you can use uh, these lenses that they have toric versions, trifocal versions also. The now key on the block is the light adjustable eye wells based on the reshaping of the lens curvature with an ultraviolet light treatment by light delivery source. What happens after 70 to 21 days, three or four touch up, like you adjust sutures post-trap, you can adjust the powers, the post-operative defocus and toricity, you can correct with the light adjustable eye well. It's possible now. Now there's a, something which is coming new up, it's on, still on experimental stage, it's a perfect lens laser system or laser-induced refractive index change, or Lyric. Here, adjustment of intraocular lens power is done with a femtosecond laser based on refractive index shaping. So what you can do, you can create multifocality in a monofocal lens, or you can reverse it, if you wish. So that gives a great opportunity to correct the defocus and toricity post-operatively. So now we have plethora of lenses, and we can mix and match those lenses according to our need. If the patient is unhappy putting one of the multifocal eye wells on one eye, still you have chance to put a different type of intraocular lenses on the other eye to reduce the glare, halos, and other issues. So you can still make the patient happy. Then which eye well to choose? We are all different, and we all have different demands in our daily life situations. Somebody likes to read books, somebody wants to be on smartphones, and on computer as well. Each patient has different preferences. Preferences vary between the leaders. So you have to choose the right presbyopia correcting eye well. Basically, monofocal eye wells are for patients who do not mind glasses and require perfect visions. Bifocal eye wells are for patients who want to read close up with books. Trifocal eye wells who, who want a fair amount of distance, intermediate and near vision, particularly works on desks, computers, and laptops. Edof eye wells are good for those patients who require intermediate and far vision like iPad, laptops, e-readers, and refractive target is minus 0.50. So choosing the right patient is very important by understanding the patient's lifestyle, their needs, their visual expectations. You need to have a strongly motivated patient who wants to achieve spectacle independence with easygoing personality and having realistic expectations, always under promise and over deliver. You must discuss the strengths, weakness, and limitations of this presbyopia eye wells. Remember, all people will not adapt to the presbyopia eye wells. Avoid the hypercritical personalities. The hypercritical patient with unrealistic expectation will never be satisfied. You must know the eye. You must know the ocular surface disease. You must optimize the tear film. You need to treat the meibomian disease. You must treat the aqueous deficiency. And also, you need to take care of the optic nerve or retinal disease because already these situations have reduction in the contrast sensitivity and you can compound these uh, contrast sensitivity reductions. So, you, and you have to add an OCT. It should be a routine whether the patient pay for it or you pay for, the, for, it, for it, you have to include the OCT. And optical system alignment is very important. High angle kappa and high angle alpha, you should be careful about. 
People size is very important because too large people, there's a more unwanted visual phenomenon of glare. If the people is too small, there's a difficulty in intraoperative eye well centrations. Again, small people is a concern. Again, zonular dehiscence is a problem because of the eye well decentrations and the tilt is a big problem. In a, in a situation of PCR, you, can have, you may have to put a multi-piece, multifocal eye well, or better to do an optic capture. Presbyopia eye well, it performs best with less than 0 0.50 cylinder. You can touch up these situations either with a limber relaxing incisions or a OCCI opposite clear corneal incisions or a toric eye well implantations. You must exclude different ectatic conditions like keratoconus, the post refractive ectasia. I use a pentacam with a corvus. And also, you must use a Fuchs, uh, you must use the specular microscopy to exclude the Fuchs endothelial dystrophy. It has been found that the number one cause of dissatisfaction after the presbyopia eye well is the residual refractive error. So contact biometry should better be avoided. Immersion is very good, but optical biometry should be the choice. Now we have Pentacam AXL, I will master 700, and I use uh, different latest generation biometric formula like Barrett Universal, Barrett Toric, Olson, Barrett Truke, Barrett TK, and Hill RBF. This is I will master 700 TK. You can see uh, here Barrett TK Universal two formulas, very accurate because it considers the posterior cornea. And also the Pentacam AXL, it has got the uh, posterior corneal value also as well. So presbyopia cataract surgery is a premium practice. It's more art than a science. And you must give chair time. There should be an open dialogue between the patient and the doctor. And that will lead to honest doctor-patient relationship. Spending more chair time pre-op, lesser will be needed post-operatively. A centered, properly sized capsular axis with 360 degree overlap, you can do it with manually, with a femto, zepto, or with an image guided system, everything is fine. You have to choose the right technology with the right surgical procedure. You can take the help of all these latest image guided markerless system, such as the Callisto, Varian, Aura, all these makes your surgery more precise. I use a Zeiss cataract with markerless, where there's a seamless transmission of data from Iwell Master 700 to Callisto I and then to my Lumera 700, and with a forum IKEA data management software. This is a toric IOL implantation, presbyopic toric. You can see the rexis with an image guided system, and this is a toric lens, presbyopic toric lens. You have to put the marks on the Z align, so that makes the surgery precise. So my take home message is, presbyopia management is a premium practice. It's more an art than a science. Precise planning is crucial for precise results. Select appropriate patients, set reasonable expectations, screen the patient, screen the eye. Choose the correct presbyopic eye well that best fits individual's lifestyle. Match the technology that best fulfills the patient's goals. Thank you for your kind attentions.